Hello everyone, my name is Jim Oberlander. I'm a faculty member uh, <clears throat> here at UT and I thought it would be a great idea to put together a video to offer students and clinical associates uh, a foundational um, overview of the mapping assignment. Uh, so students, this is for you, faculty, clinical faculty, clinical associates, this is for you. Um, this is sort of what was expected uh, when this assignment was put together. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm simply going to go through the rubric. I'm going to explain each step uh, on a sort of made-up patient in my mind <clears throat> that very well could be uh, similar to some of the patients you'll experience on the floor. Um, so if you'll follow along, we'll make this as short and sweet as we possibly can. So obviously you all find the, you can all find the rubric on Blackboard, print it off, take it with you uh, to the clinical environment where you're going to be selecting a patient to do this assignment on. Uh, that way you'll have an idea of what exactly, in, what, what information you need for this assignment. So first off, we're going to, I'm going to sort of make this um, two-sided. I'm going to have this here, side one, side two, because you may be doing this on a poster board, you might be doing this on computer, um, that's going to be up to your clinical instructor as to um, how they want it turned in. Uh, there's a lot of great um, online resources that can be utilized. I mean, you can do this in a Word document, but uh, there's a website called CMAP, it, literally CMAP. Um, if you Google that, you'll find a free resource that is a concept map uh, tool, online tool. There's also another website called Bubble, B-U-B-B-L, I believe is how it's spelled. Um, but if you Google B-U-B-B-L, uh, you'll find another concept map um, online resource to uh, format this into. And I, I find the online resources are, are very useful. I've had students use both. Um, I think a lot of students have leaned towards the C-map, um, but uh, very, very useful. I allow my students to turn in a poster board if they like. Uh, but as we're all becoming more technologically advanced, uh, it is easier to edit a uh, electronic version than it is to fix a poster board version. So that's, that's my little tidbit there. Um, step one says place the symbol in the center of the map with the patient's goal for health, quote patient in a call out bubble. So we'll just put here little smiley face, a little call out bubble, and um, that, that's really what it's looking for. Now you don't have to do a stick figure. A lot of people will uh, go online and they'll find some comic strip, strip character or uh, celebrity or whatever and they just post that in there. Um, what we want to do with this is we want to think about <clears throat> what the patient has said throughout the course of our, our interactions with them that are leaning us towards a goal. And we can ask them this question, what's your health goal? It's a great question to ask a patient. What do you want out of the visit here at the hospital? What do you want us to do for you? What are, what are you hoping for? So that's what this, this number one is looking for. Um, if your patient is not communicating, then that makes it a little more difficult. We might have to add in our own nursing judgment to that. We might want to ask family members, uh, but we want to get it from the patient if at all possible. We also want to think about um, their diagnosis. Now it may not be linked with their goal, but it, more than likely we're going to say, hey, you're here for this, this, and this. What, what's, what do you want out of this, this visit? How can we help you? So we're going to assume that this person is in with CHF, exacerbation. All right? That's there. That's actually number 3 on the rubric, okay? But 
With CHF exacerbation, they might have some respiratory difficulties, they might have some edema, they might have a whole bunch of different things. So we're going to say this person says, I want no more edema. I want no more edema. However they want to communicate it, get it away, I don't want it, I want to deal with it, it hurts to walk, whatever may go along with that. But I don't want any more edema. So that's number one. Number two, write a brief admission story, reason for admission, age, gender, re relevant BCFs, uh, vital signs, lab and diagnostic testing related to admission, both subjective and objective. So a lot of this information you'll find on the bubble do what I call the bubble do sheet. Um, it's a part of your clinical packet uh, and it's got a little bubble dude on it that shows your physical assessment, your objective assessment, and then it's got some questions above it that are broken down into air, food, water, normalcy, hazards, uh, guiding you in your uh, interview process, your health assessment of the patient. And then off to the right hand side, of this landscape version um, format that it's got some uh, related to Orem theoretical um, aspects that we'll get to in just a little bit. But we want you getting this information. Some of it will come from the patient, some of it will come from uh, the chart, you know, reason for admission, age, gender relevant. You and your clinical instructor and your environment, your patient can help process through this information. But this is going to sort of go on its own little piece of paper, admission, history, story. All right, so the admission history story is sort of assessment number one. All right, assessment number one. Meaning that in the course of this mapping assignment, there's essentially going to be three different assessments. You're going to have the assessment that you're getting from the chart before you ever showed up on the floor. So these labs and diagnostics are not the ones from the day that you're on the floor. They're, they're admission. They're pre your existence on the floor. The mapping assignment is going to be assessment number two, your physical assessment, your subjective objective assessment of the patient, your information of the last 24 hours or so of the patient stuff that you're directly interacting with. And then we're going to get to later, we're going to talk about Orem, and we're going to talk about a SOAP note, which is you have created a, diagno a nursing diagnosis, you've created um, interventions, but then a SOAP note is an assessment following the interventions. So we're going to have assessment number one, you get from the chart, assessment number two, your physical assessment, and assessment number three, is it going to come later on down on the rubric. So that's number two. This is number three. We're already 12 points into the assignment. Number four on the rubric, place other medical diagnoses and chronic health problems on the map, each separately. Leave space for related medications and other data. So here's what they want to have you do. And we want it to be neat and organized and colorful and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to try some different colors and shapes. We're going to make, let's say, COPD. We're going to have renal insufficiency or renal failure. Sufficiency. No, safe space. Failure. And um, let's see, what's another good one? How about hypertension? Okay. So those are other medical diagnoses and chronic health problems that we want to put on the map. We're going to kind of spread them out a little bit so we have space for other items to be placed. That's number four. Now we're 15 points into the assignment. Number five. Place surgical interventions and medical treatments for the admitting diagnosis and chronic problems close to each related diagnosis.
This includes all medications taken in the past 24 hours. So, we have surgical interventions, we have medical treatments, surgical, medical, meds, okay? So, maybe this person has renal failure, hypertension, CHF. Let's say they had, uh, they have a dialysis port. So we're going to put that maybe in a different color. We're going to put um, a fistula. It involves a surgical procedure. Okay. Um, hypertension, COPD. It probably doesn't have a whole lot of other uh, issues going on here surgically. So that one's done. How about medical treatments? Think about some medical treatments that would go along with this patient. Hypertension, renal failure, COPD, CHF. Medical treatments. All right, so oxygen. Let's say O2. Put that in a box. Dialysis, because that's going along with this as well. And actually, we're going to put medical treatments in a circle. I'm going to put dialysis. And I'm going to put dialysis near the fistula because we're going to connect those. Um, hypertension, CHF, uh, medical treatments. There's a lot out there. I don't want to, I don't have a whole lot of space here. So I'm just trying to give you an idea of how to put this together. But there's going to be some other medical treatments probably going on here as well that you'll find in the orders or for your patient specifically. Then we've got meds. Meds are probably going to take up a large portion of the map. So we're going to start with CHF. That's typically a fluid issue um, that is linked with the renal failure and the hypertension. So we're going to say Lasix. Lasix, and I'm going to put these in a triangle. Um, I would encourage you to also put down the dose. So we'll say 20 milligrams daily PO. Okay? Let's, let's think about our five rights, right? Patient, right dose, right drug, right route, right time. Now, it's not going to have a time in here. It's going to have more of a frequency. We've got the right patient, the right drug, right dose, the right route, and the right time. So I encourage you to put that in, and as you interact with more patients, the more information you put down and you start to uh, assimilate into your understanding, you're going to have a much stronger uh, confidence on the floor. So that's one drug. We come over to COPD, maybe we do albuterol, okay, we could do one puff. Q, six hours, inhaler, okay? We could have, um, let's see, maybe a steroid. So an Advair has a steroid in it. Advair, again, we could do one puff daily, inhaled. Okay. We come up to renal failure. Lasix is linked with renal failure because it's a fluid issue. Um, they could have other meds linked in with this, especially with the hypertension and the renal failure. We could be thinking about um, our blood pressure meds here as well. How about uh, metoprolol? And again, your drug, dose, route, and time for the patient. We could have um, amlodipine, which is another category of drug. Amlodipine. Um, you could have you have asinopril, diuretics, multiple different categories of blood pressure medications. Again, drug, dose, route, and time. Uh, doesn't quite fit into a triangle very well, but you'll find shapes and sizes for you that'll fit. Um, and you get the idea, okay? 
Now, you notice I've just kind of thrown these up there, and that's what's nice about an electronic version of a mapping assignment, is that you can move this around to suit you uh, and your style and how your patience needs to be set up. Now it says number six is uh, priority physical assessment. This is your physical assessment. Physical, subjective, and objective. Okay, so we want to put things in like, um, I'm going to do a different color here. Go back to the box. I'll do a circle. Um, let's do COPD. We have our lung sounds. All right, now don't write down lung sounds. Actually write down what they were. So crackles. and wheezes. Okay? So you're not actually writing the lung sounds, you're writing what they were. Okay? Now the reason crackles and wheezes, that, I put this up here as sort of a, an error. Okay? I really wouldn't put them both together, I'd actually separate them out because the crackles goes with the CHF in the fluid issue, the wheezes goes with the COPD. All right, so there, it's all the lung sounds, but the reason, the rationale for these two items are different. So we don't want them in the same box. So we're going to get rid of that. We're going to say lung sounds, crackles, and lung sounds, wheezes. And I'm going to put them in different boxes, different circles, different shapes, and when we connect them, we're going to connect them to different items because of the rationale behind it. And that comes down later uh, with number 13 on your rubric that has to do with the connections. So that's one physical assessment piece. Um, they're talking about the edema and their health goals, so we want to have edema up here somewhere. So and it's going to probably be linked to a couple different things, so I'm actually going to put edema. Now you don't just write edema, you write what kind it was. Maybe it was a, a plus three uh, lower extremity. Okay, edema. Um, hypertension. How about vital signs? That's a part of your physical assessment. So vital signs, we're going to put blood pressure, 172 over 96, that's a piece. What goes along with that? How about pulse? Pulse is 74. Um, oh. Respers, we can go over here, 20. Um, Sap with the O2, we got a pulse ox of say 92%. And the O2, I sort of left something out there too. What did I leave out there? That's right, what kind of O2? How about two liters nasal cannula? All right, so as you're going through this, you're going to find, oh man, I left some information out there. I need to add a little bit more information. We got a SAT of 92%. So we got our respirators, our SAT, pulse, our BP. We're missing a couple. What are we missing? Pain, excellent, and temp. All right, so temp, maybe temp really, maybe the temp's normal, it doesn't go with anything. So we could even have that near the patient. Temp, 98 2 degrees Fahrenheit. All right? And it, that's just going to connect with the patient. All right? It doesn't really go anywhere else. And then pain. Maybe their pain is a zero. Who knows? I mean, you could have pain with some of these items, but maybe not. Maybe some with the edema. Um, so maybe we'll say pain is a 2, lower extremity. Okay? So there's our vitals. Physical assessment. How about the fistula? Brewy. 
brew. All right? And they're positive for the brewing the through, which is a good thing with the fistula. Now these two can go in the same box, unlike the crackles and wheezes, because the rationale is the same. It's showing the functioning of the fistula. Um, <clears throat> do, 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 do. Respers, vitals, physical assessment, heart tones. We could put our heart tones in here. Heart tones, strong and distant. Um, bowel sounds. Now, bowel sounds really don't fit anywhere, but they're still valid. And especially if you've got other issues going on, bowel sounds, positive, four quadrants or in four quadrants, however you want to do that. So that's the vowel sounds. You, you get the idea. Other pieces of assessment that go in here, they're neuro checks. Um, uh, other, other skin assessments with items here. You're going to want to put those items in the map. Number seven, include relevant diagnostic tests, lab results, x-rays, CTs, biopsies, um, now, here's another thing. I see this a lot. I see a lot of people putting their labs in one big box. That, that's, again, the same rationale to say don't do that is because the crackles and wheezes. A reason for somebody to have a low hemoglobin is not the same reason that they have a high BUN or their troponin's off. So you want the labs in different boxes unless they're all linked. So hemoglobin, hematocrit, Red blood cells, all three of those are going to have probably the same rationale as to why they're all low or high. Um, other items you want to separate out, BUN and creatinine, uh, would probably both be elevated with the renal failure. Okay, so BUN and creatinine. Now, you don't just want to put them down, you want to write down what the value was. So, BUN was 37, creatinine was 2.1, all right? Both of those are elevated, all right? What I also like to have my students do is I have them put down the two most recent lab values. So I would actually have them do 37, 44, 2.1, 2.4. And I would have somewhere in a legend saying that the first value was a previous result, and this value is the most recent result. I don't even necessarily have them put the dates down, just because I want them to start, I want students to start seeing that you can't just put one value down and get an idea of what's going on with the patient. Because this is getting worse. If I only give you one result, you're not going to know if they're getting better or getting worse. So I really encourage two lab values for this assignment when all at all possible. Um, other values that you might want to start um, <clears throat> looking at with this. Um, renal failure can affect hemoglobin, hematocrit, red blood cells. So H and H and RBCs, and you can put the values down there. Um, CHF, there's a value uh, BNP, brain natriuretic peptide, and we'll say this one's 700. Uh, if it's over 100, then your patient's probably in CHF or is getting worse and worse. So again, one value doesn't say anything, but maybe their value, their BNP, previously was 700, and now it's 150. That's showing that they're getting better. Just giving one value doesn't do that. But when you put down two values, you get an idea of, is this patient getting better or are they getting worse? Um, and again, there's going to be lots of values that you're going to find on your patient. If you find that you have lab values that you're not sure about, don't just leave them off the map. Just connect them off of the patient. So maybe you do have 
labs over here that you have a few that don't really seem to be connected with anything directly, um, or at least of the major concerns. And I don't, I don't think there's a problem with putting a few in here in the box, but what I don't want, and what you don't want to do for your own learning is just list 19 lab values in a box and say, they're the patient's labs. Well, we know they're the patient's labs, but what do they mean? That's what we're going after with this assignment. What I also want you to notice is we're going to have a couple lab values, most recent, um, and one directly behind that most recent lab value, but they're going to be different than your original uh, admitting lab values on most patients that have been in the hospital more than a couple days. So up here, you're also going to have a BNP. Up here, you're also going to have a different hemoglobin hematocrit red blood cell. You're going to have a different BUN and creatinine. So you're going to have multiple lab values across the spectrum here. Then we have <clears throat> the end of our patient story situation. 30 points down. Now I want to actually jump to um, connections uh, and number 13 on your rubric. It says draw lines between map elements and explain or indicate how the two parts are connected, that are connected or related. This is a key part of this assignment. It's worth 20 points, a fifth of the paper. So this is, this number 13 is the meat of this assignment. Putting all this stuff down just puts it down to play with. Now we want to start connecting the dots. Um, oh, didn't want to do that, but I did it electronically. Edema, edema is going to be connected up here to renal failure. Pains connected to the edema. Lung sounds, crackles, even the edema, CHF. Um, wheezes, COPD. Respers, up to COPD. SAT, O2, O2 to COPD. Advair, albuterol, VUN and creatinine to renal failure. Dialysis, Brewy to the fistula, fistula to the renal failure, um, or fistula to even better, the dialysis. Um, so you see, you don't want it all connecting right back to the patient. You want to actually interweave the areas that are connected. Now Lasix, Lasix is connected to CHF for the fluid, but it's also connected to the renal failure. All right, another really important lab value that you might be thinking about, or I hope that you're thinking about, is your potassium. What about potassium? Potassium up here probably going to be borderline low with the Lasix. It could be high because of the renal failure. I'm going to say 3.3 and 3.2. So and that is even connected to the Lasix because the Lasix is wasting the potassium even though renal failure you have an issue with potentially high potassium by itself. Metaprolol for blood pressure, amylodipine for blood pressure, BP, pulse is connected typically with, along with your blood pressure, your heart tones. With that, your heart tones can link back in here to CHF as well. Um, <clears throat> so with this, I want you to see, and it's going to look much better than this, I'm sure, especially if it's done online, is you want to spread this out you want to leave yourself room for connections. Now, just putting lines is not the connection. The connection is the rationale. So what I typically have my students do is I'll have them label the lines A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, or number them, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. However, you want to label them is fine. Probably now in the electronic versions, there is enough space and the font can get small enough that you can just type in the box. That's fine. You can label it. If you label it, you put your rationale on another sheet of paper and turn that in with the assignment, um, or you just put it on the line. That's fine. Um, what I want you to realize is that the rationale 
is the meat of this assignment. This number, this number 20, or number 13, worth 20 points, understanding why crackles is linked with CHF, showing that you understand why wheezes are connected to COPD, why the fistula needs a brewing, a thrill in order to show that it's patent, why potassium is linked to both Lasix and renal failure. So putting those pieces together really starts before you even work on the mapping assignment. You take your information and you look up potassium, why would it be off? And you'll see that renal failure would have it be high or a diuretic, certain diuretics are gonna make it be low. You, that's, that's where the learning from this assignment comes from. Um, it's not just putting lines, it's not just putting the pieces that you found on the floor, their lab values, that, just putting down SAD of 92% doesn't mean anything. But that you understand that for COPD, that's okay. The rationale would be, yes, they're on two liters to keep them maybe around 90%, but we're not expecting them to hit 99% or 100% if they have COPD. That is the meat of this. That's why we're doing all the rest of it. Number 14 is layout, um, color-coded legend, legible, neat, well-organized, easy-to-follow connections, and explanations. Now, if you were grading me, I would probably not get a 10 <clears throat> out of 10 for neatness and layout. Okay, you want to think through these items, and that's why the electronic versions are really nice. Um, <clears throat> very legible, very neat, that kind of thing. Um, if you are going to do it on a poster board, I encourage large poster boards so that you can space things out um, neatly. So that you look at it and you go, not what in the world, but oh yeah, that looks like that. The thing I encourage mostly with your layout is different colors, different shapes um, for different items. As many different items as you need, that's fine. Eight, nine, ten different categories. Um, so all the meds, I can look at this and go, oh, med, 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 triangles, they're all meds. What meds were the patient on? Boom, there it is. Secondary diagnosis, COPD, renal failure, hypertension. Boom, there it is. Main diagnosis, all by itself. Um, lab value, where's other lab values? Lab value, lab value. There's my lab values, okay? Assessment findings, assessment, 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 assessment. Assessment, assessment, assessment. There's a lab value, I put it in a circle. Oops, it should be a square. So you, you see what I mean? You wanna really um, put some thought into even how you're gonna lay this thing out. That is steps one through seven and 13 and 14 that have to do with putting the map together. Um, I'm going to start into steps 8 through 12 in a second video um, that has to do with the nursing system, the nursing process, diagnosis, uh, goals, interventions, and evaluation. So I will see you again shortly in video part two. Have a nice day.